Hey, what's up, Official Heat fans? Dominic here, coming at you from Troy Savings Bank Music Hall. We're here with a singer-songwriter from the UK. Independent Magazine has referred to her as the best wordsmith of her generation, Thea Gilmer. Thea, thank you for taking time out to uh, join us on Official Heat. It's great to be here. Now, uh, you don't often hit the, uh, the state side. You're on tour right now. How's it going? It's going really well, you know, I think um, I think US audiences just kind of get music a lot more than UK ones do, you know, it, it's a lot nicer to play to, to US audiences out here. That's a good answer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you're promoting anything? Uh, your eighth album just came out, was it September, was it? Yeah, it came out September 23rd, it's called Lijacker, and, um, and it's on um, Ryko, which is like my biggest label yet, so it's kind of exciting and scary at the same time. Obviously, being a big fan, I've listened to Lijacker like five times, so I'm familiar with it. It's kind of, it's a different flavor from your, uh, your other music that you've done, but I'm still noticing a common thread, like what was the inspiration behind Lijacker? Well, it was... My previous album um, was called Harpo's Ghost and it was, it was on quite a big label in the UK, it was on Sanctuary in the UK and it was very, um, there were a lot of hands involved in making that record and a lot of, a lot of people wanting their say and a lot of people wanting to, to kind of give me ideas about songs that they liked and stuff and it, and it just felt like, um, like it was a bit too tampered with and Lijacker started life, it didn't start life as an album at all actually, it started life as me wanting to just reclaim my artistic control, basically, and uh, and and decide to make music for this for the sake of making music rather than you know rather than to please anybody else. And and I started to record the album in my home studio. I used the, those two words lightly because it, it's really like a little six by four box room at the top of my house, so it's tiny. But um, but it really worked for me because I was writing songs and I was recording them straight away. And I was exercising a lot of creativity and kind of, you know, I didn't have a drum kit so I was finding different things to hit and, and you know, only one of them was my husband and, you know, it was all good. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, you know, it was great. It was a great way to sort of, to really, I suppose, just get to grips with music again and just, just, just rediscover the joy in it without having to make music for anybody else. And it wasn't supposed to be an album at all, but when I listened back to what I'd recorded, it, it felt kind of too good. I just, I, I just liked what I'd done too much to just sort of let it kind of waste away and that's when I sort of opened the doors a bit and kind of let other people in, let, let my husband, my producer in and, uh, and kind of took it into a bigger studio. Excellent. Well, I, I like the image of you uh, sitting at home waking up at three o'clock in the morning being like, ah, I have it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull these out. This is a recommendation uh, part of the interview. Of these, each one of these has uh, one of your albums name on it now. There was somebody who didn't know Thea Gilmore music. You're like, what is wrong with you? Here's, this is the album you should listen to. I have mine that uh, I would, I do give people. One, two. Oh, two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, three, two, one. Ah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Choice for choosing that album the theme or a particular song? A Rules for Jokers, I suppose, is, is the album that kind of really, really kind of moted my career forward a bit, which, which is um, the reason that I picked it. But also it has a song, this girl is taking bets on it, which is, um, which is firstly one of my favourite songs to sing. It's, it's the song that's, that, even though it's an older song now, um, it's remained a song that's been so close to my heart and it's just great fun, I just love it. So, so it's, it's always got to be that song. Fantastic song. I have pretty much every song that I've memorized. Uh, <laughs> you've been in the music business for a while, so you recognize some of the, the trends that go on with, uh, well, specifically, I'm talking about uh, file sharing, you know, the internet, like Napster comes along, YouTube. It's like, how do you, as a, as a musical artist, how have you responded to these kind of trends? You know, it kind of, I guess they're taking away from music in a sense. Oh, no, I don't think that at all. I, th I think, um, I think the online community can only uh, be of benefit to, to music. I, I know um, a lot of record labels are very upset about the about free downloads and people kind of sharing music in that way. But I just think if people are not going to pay for music, they're not going to pay for music. They're, they're going to find some way, whether it's online or, or, or just copying CDs off their mates. And 
but but there will always be a core audience out there who respect the music and respect musicians enough to actually put their hand in their pocket and that will always be the way it is and and, uh, and I don't see that, that there's any sense in fighting that. At the end of the day that the, the, the whole point about making music is um, getting it to the broadest audience possible and, uh, and like I say there, there will always be people who want to pay for it and there will always be people who listen to it and just pass on it and that's fine. Um, so. In terms, of, in terms of building a kind of musical community, the internet's kind of really helped me as a musician to stay in contact with, in direct contact with people, you know, and I'm not as, as sort of vigorous a blogger as perhaps I should be, and certainly some musicians are, but, um, but I really enjoy it, and I love that, that direct connection that you get with people who listen to your music, because you get their thoughts, and you get their feelings, and you actually realise how people are responding to your music, and, and that can only be a good thing.